actual science. People sent in samples off, uh, I think it's 350z.org uh, or .com, where they sent in 86 oil samples, and the company they sent it into is called Blackstone. Uh, it looks just like this. So they send this to you for free, and what this is, I'll go ahead and show it to you here real quick. All this says is this is when you're changing your oil. This is a uh, sample collection kit. And what you do is you take the oil, you stick it in this container here when it's draining, then you go ahead and put it back in this container, put it in the plastic baggie that it has in here with instructions, and put down how many miles uh, between the oil change that you had on it and how many miles are on the car. And what they do in this laboratory is they'll go ahead and look at parts per million, uh, how many metal particles are actually in the oil, and what metal particles they are, where they're coming from. Are they coming from the piston rings? Are they coming from your main bearings? Are they coming from your timing chain? Um, and these are good things to know, not only if you have the car and you own it, but say you want to go out and buy a used car. Um, 20, 29 bucks, you can send one of the in, and it doesn't matter how much they shine up the motor, make it look all nice and pretty. Uh, when you send in this used oil analysis, it's going to be able to tell you if the engine was well taken care of or not. So my recommendation, if you ever want to buy a used car, is I would go and have this sent into the lab before you buy it so you can validate that motor is doing just fine. So in this video, I wanted to go ahead and I will link up the graph and show you uh, the different oils and what places they came in, how many parts per million of the oil was uh, left behind, of uh, the particles, I guess you should say. So let's go ahead and... Uh, you know, I don't have a Pedro, but I'm going to say, hit it, Pedro. back. Thanks, Pedro. So as you can see here, um, I was showing you the kit to go ahead and send to Blackstone Labs. In this picture, you can see this is what happens with your used oil where it gets sent off to. So once you mail it to their laboratory, here would be, I guess, the female scientist um, that is able to now, it's kind of different. She's interested in oil, huh? So she would be the one or whatever scientist they have there would be the person that actually takes a look at the metal particles left in the oil. And this looks like the laboratory that they would run it through. So there's one thing I want to disclose before <clears throat> anyone gets their feelings hurt on you know the results of these oils. Um, the one thing I wanted to say is there's not really one best oil. There's several oils that have consistently performed well in the VQ engine. So according to these used uh, oil analysis results, in fact, most of the common engine oils that uh, you'd be able to get over at your local parts store, they're actually performed just fine in your 350Z or your G35. And while some tend do to look better, some in this report will actually look better than others with this used oil analysis. It, they're still API and SAE certified uh, 30 and 40 weight oils, which will meet the needs of um, the VQ 35DE engine. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, even though all these oils will meet the standards that are necessary for the motor, some are better than others. And we're talking synthetics. Any synthetics are all good. So as you look at this chart here, this is a standard deviation of parts per million of particles found in the oil left over through this test when it got sent off the Blackstone Labs. So if you look, I got this uh, off the actual My350Z form. 
And what this is, is the con these results here are a contemplation of 86 different sample set in. It says here the mean and standard deviation of the values were derived from 86 total used oil analysis results, which all came from stock BQ35DE engines dating back from 2003. So if you look here, this is different uh, particles of metal in your engine. There's aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, and lead. And this is showing parts per million of what was found in the oil when it was actually sent back to the laboratory. So if you look here, anything in green is actually the standard deviation. It's lower than average. Uh, anything in red is higher than average. And if it's gray, that's just the main average of you know what the results usually come back as. So let me show you actually where these particles are found in the motor so you can have a better understanding of what these actually mean. And then we'll go over which oils, um, I believe, after looking at this chart and having 86 different samples, is one of the best uh, picks to go with. Okay, the particles left behind in the oil uh, that are actually getting measured, uh, where they're coming from in the motor. Iron, as you can see here, comes from your cylinder liner camshaft, uh, your oil pump, timing chain. Chromium is basically from around the piston rings. Copper comes from your bearings, your valve guides, and bushing wear. Aluminum comes from the piston and the piston thrust bearing wear. And as you can see here, silver and tin comes from also bearing wear. All right, it's time to get to the meat and potatoes here. Let's get down to the dirt, nasty oil, used results, and see which one placed where um, out of this test. Sixth place was Mobile One. Actually, 5W30, 10W30, and another 10W30 sample, the uh, high mileage sample, all three of them had red. Uh, they had red and chromium, and they had red and iron. And chromium would be uh, your timing chain. Oh, sorry, chromium is your piston rings. And then iron would be coming from your timing chain and your camshafts, which it had red in. And so that's why I got sixth place. As you see here on the chart, mobile one right here, here, all had three red in it. All three different samples had red in it, uh, different weights, I should say. And red means it's actually showing higher than average per thousand miles of particles of metal. So that's why I got six place was just regular Castrol GTX. See here, as you see here, Castrol GTX of 5W30 came in fifth place. It had no red at all. And it had three areas, uh, copper, lead, and tin, that were better than average. Coming in fourth place was Pennzoil Platinum 5W30, a full synthetic, which what's different about it is it's made from natural gas. I was actually surprised when I was looking at this uh, used oil analysis chart and saw pins oil where it came in at. I never thought it would be so close to being at the top, um, but it came in fourth. Now here's a uh, pins oil platinum. Uh, here's the see it had three greens in it, which put me uh, to put it in the fourth position. Now coming up next will be, I mean it was almost a tie between these two. Castrol 5W30 synthetic and Pennzoil Platinum 5W30. You can go back and look at the results, but I'm putting Castrol as number three. Coming in third place is Castrol Edge uh, 5W30. This is actually what I use in my car because the, the ones that get first and second place are too hard to get a hold of. So I've been very happy with it. My car is 160,000 miles. I've had no issues. So I've also sent in my own lab results um, which I'll go over at the very end of this. Uh, another convincing factor is my girlfriend's BMW. When I changed the oil on it, when I actually took off the oil cap, is it said Castrol. It recommended Castrol's oil on it. So that's where I actually came to find this list, to find to validate that other people agreed it was Castrol was a good oil to pick. So that's my choice for my car that I use, and I get it at Walmart. 25 bucks a jug, then I pay 10 bucks to get a K&N filter, and I call it a uh, so the first three years, four years, I owned my G, I'd say I used Mobile One. Uh, I, I was a Mobile One fan. I was sucked into the marketing on it. It just looked like the best brand. So that's why I went with it. And then once I found this chart and I was looking at these results, my mind had changed on Mobile One. 
and then that's when I became uh, a Castrol fan. Been using it for probably uh, the first 40,000, 50,000 miles were Mobile One, and the last 110,000 have been Castrol, fully synthetic. So that's about 100,000 miles, and I've had no issues at all. So if I were to put these in first place, uh, Castrol Synthetic, the Zero W30, which is too hard to get a hold of. Um, you have to order it online. It's not really in the stores. It got first. As you can see here, it had four uh, that were in the green, which were lower than average per 1,000 miles with particles of metal found behind. In second place, I was putting Amsoil 10W30, even though the car recommends 5W30. Some people put 10 in there because it's supposed to help with oil burning, but I don't. I just do 5W30. Um, so this is in second place, and you can see here it's also got four greens. And then in third place, like I said, it's Castrol, which is really a, uh, their synthetic 5W30, um, not zero. The zero weight is what got first because it's better. And number four was a Pennzoil Platinum, which was really a tie in between Castrol and uh, Pennzoil. If you look here, both three that are lower than average. This one is two, and then they're really close if you're looking at down to the thousands of a tenth. So in the fifth place, I'm just putting regular Castrol synthetic, right? Not even synthetic, just regular Castrol motor oil did very well. And then sixth place, we got Mobile One. As you can see here, they all every Mobile One had a red in it, which it was higher than average. So it placed way worse than what I thought it would. And then these fancy ones, you you, you see every once in a while, Motul. I've seen that brand, and, and they did horrible. That's why it's special order and expensive. If it's mainstream, it's doing its job. So I wanted to go ahead and end on this. That's a little bit uh, geeking out on some oil here. Hopefully this helped you. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, when you send in your oil, they actually will tell you how much uh, additives are left in it so you know when you should change your oil. I used to change my oil every 3,700 miles because that's what it said in the manual, so I'd go every 4,000. Then when I got synthetic, I'd go every 5,000. After sending it into the lab, I sent it in a 7,500-mile sample, and they told me I could go to 10. And they said there was plenty of additives in it. Um, personally, I just change mine every seven to 8,000 miles. Haven't had an issue. And by sending it into Blackstone Labs, I have really validated it instead of just listening to suggestions, when somebody actually examined the oil, did a test of it, and told me how much additives are left and if it's still able to do its job at this mileage change interval. So hopefully this helps you. Um, there will be more videos to come. If you like it, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.